All right. So today I'm going to talk about why you as a man should avoid making a woman that makes more money than your range. Okay. Avoid dating a woman or getting serious with a woman who makes more than you do outside of your range. And I'm choosing my words very, very carefully and being very, very specific because you guys know that part of the reason why I started doing Monday Mondays is because it is kind of like the rebirth of the YouTube relationship expert, right? And you got Kevin Samuels out here talking about high value men. You got Alpha Male Strategies saying that if you want to get married, then you are somehow a beta male. You got, you know, just, just all these people who are now spewing this advice for men out there. And, you know, some of these guys are, give better advice than other guys, but but I don't feel like anyone is dealing with the reality of, you know, today, right? You know, I mean, the average American male makes, you know, what, like 55 grand a year, something like that in that range. Um, so, the, you know, I want to give kind of practical advice to the average guy, right? My advice is for the dudes that you're probably never going to be a high value man, meaning a man who makes over six figures. Uh but you're not going to be this homeless bum either. You're going to be the average guy, the average American. And, and that's a dude making around between 50 and 60 grand a year. Okay. That, that's most of the country, contrary to what many people on social media would have you believe. Right. And so the reason why I don't think you as a man should date outside of your range financially is because the, uh, uh, in a capitalist society, money represents power. Money represents opportunities. Money represents better health care. Money represents safer neighborhoods, right? Money can literally change your entire world in a capitalist society. But we don't think about a lot of the times the way it can impact relationships because it can have a hell of an impact. And that's what, what I'm kind of here to discuss with you all today. We are entering a space now where more women are entering colleges than men are. More women are graduating from colleges with their degrees than men are. And so what you're seeing play out as time move, moves forward, Increasingly, there are going to be women who are earning significantly more than they did 20, 30 years ago. And there are going to be men earning less than they did 20, 30, 30 years ago. That, that, that's kind of what the general trend seems to be showing us as time goes by. And so to simply say for men that we should kind of hold ourselves to this 1950 standard where we should be the sole provider is ludicrous. You are not making the same amount of money that your, your fathers or your grandfathers made, right? And even to make that same amount of money, you have to have more education than your fathers or great or grandfathers did, right? And so it is important that we kind of update our manual, so, so to speak, right? So you're not going to be the sole provider. You literally cannot be the sole provider. Most of you watching this video, I will go as far as to say you shouldn't even want to be the primary provider, right? What's the difference? The sole provider means this is the only financial in, this is the only income that the that you know me and my partner have right and, and of course this this today's video is meant for men who are interested in getting into long term relationships with a with a woman uh, in most cases to start a family so sole provider you are the only source of income primary provider means that your that your spouse your wife is working but she's she she makes significantly less money than you do that is just as bad in today's time as well. Because, like we said before, most men are making around uh, between 50 to 60 grand a year. And so if you want to raise a family in today's you know, society, especially depending on where you live, you are going to want somebody who makes around the same amount of money as you, which would mean that together you two will be, will be bringing in six figures. And I know taxes and all that stuff, but you get what I'm trying to say. So if you're dating a woman or you're, you, know, you want to get serious with the woman and, and uh, she's making more than 10 grand than you are, you open yourself up to financial abuse, right? So, you know, this was actually an argument that was made by many feminists, uh, you know, when they were trying to get women into the workforce because they knew the importance of having access to your own money. When you rely on somebody to, you know, to be the sole provider or the significant provider in your relationship, you, it is almost impossible for you to stand on an equal playing field with that person because then you will be relying on that person to view you as their equal even though you are not pulling anywhere near your equal amount of weight in the relationship let me tell you without those problems will uh, pop up so i'm a man i'm making fifty one thousand dollars a year right and my, my, my spouse she's making 
$59,000 a year, right? So I'm making $51,000, she's making $59,000. And we're discussing buying, I don't know, a new car. I don't like our financial situation, so I tell her, baby, I don't think we should buy a new car. She thinks we have more wiggle room um, than I do based on off of our finances. And she says, I think we do have enough money, right? Me and her will probably be talking about this for a couple of weeks because me and her need each other in order to finance this car, right? Why? Because our paychecks are close. Yeah, she's making 8,000 more than I do, but she will still be relying on the money that I'm bringing in in order to make these car payments. Now, same scenario, but let's widen the gap. So I'm making 51,000, but my wife, she's making $71,000. Same discussion. I don't think we have the finances for it. She says, yes, we do. Uh, that conversation might not last as long because she could say, well, look, I have more, I make more money than you. I think we are ready for this. And baby, if, if, you know, if you can't afford to keep up with payments, guess what? I have, I have more, I, have, I make more money. I have some extra money that I can put towards this vehicle. What just happened? Because she has more money than I do. She felt that she had more of a say than I did for the purchase of this vehicle. Therein lies the problem with the pay gap, fellas, where your woman is making significantly more than you do in the relationship. She might not be trying to overstep boundaries or make you feel irrelevant or, you know, emasculate you. She, she could just really want the car. But then that's where it starts. And then, you know, once she, once she can do it for one thing, she can do it for something else. It is hard for them for her to respect you because you make so much less than she does. Right. And this, of course, it does not apply to every single relationship. This is, this is not, you know, but you guys know I talk about the, the, the rule. I don't talk about the exception. We focus on the rule on this channel. Right. And so that's why you shouldn't be with a woman who makes significantly more money than you, because you don't want to be put in that position. Right. And at the same time, you also don't want to be in a position where you're dating a woman who makes significantly less than you do. I'm making $51,000 and my spouse, she's bringing in $31,000, right? So I'm bringing in $51,000, she's bringing in $31,000. It is going to be hard for a man to resist doing the same thing that the woman did in the previous scenario. You know, you talk to your wife, she'll say, baby, I don't think we can afford it. And you'll say, baby, I think we can. And because you make $20,000 more than she does, you might strongly convince her to, to back you up. And she might feel less confident standing up to you because she makes less money. That's another point that I forgot to bring up earlier, where maybe maybe a, the higher earner spouse doesn't write out, say, you know what? Forget your point. What might happen is because the person making so much lower than the other spouse, you know, th they'll feel less confident arguing against the new purchase because they know that financially they don't have a leg to stand on. And so you don't want to date a woman who's making that much less than you fellas because you don't want to become like the same douchebag that I just said what happened if you did a woman who makes more money than you. Also, you don't want the stress of being the only person contributing to the family. The workforce is going to get more volatile as time moves on. It just is. The days of you working at one company from the, the time that you're, you know, 28 to the day you die, those days are over. Many of us will have about, you know, five to six jobs before we check out of this life. So maybe even more than that, probably around eight or nine jobs before we check out of this you know, thing we call life, right? Um, and so you get fired from your job, what do you do? You know, your partner's making 20, 20 grand less than you do, fellas, right? It's gonna stress you out. You, you, you want someone who's as close, married as you are, and that is the new healthy relationship, right? You want your partner to be bringing in close to what you're bringing in. And, then you, and then, then you can split the housework down the middle evenly or split it by, okay, you know what? She's the better cook, so she'll cook. And then you know what I'll do? I'll do the bulk of the cleaning, right? And then split things down the middle that way. What we're looking for is interdependence. Interdependence. That's what we want. We don't want so we, we don't want sole provider. We don't want primary provider. We want interdependence. That's what we want, fellas, okay? And so as women begin to make more money, uh, many of you will be dating women who earn more. And so if you meet a woman who's making, you know, t 20 more grand than you, then you have a decision to make. Are you going to commit to a career change or uh, a promotion 
is, is there a way for you to close this gap to about 10 grand um, in the near future? If not, trust me, stay away from her. Stay away from her. Does it doesn't make her a bad person? And, and I know it's gonna be hard for you because, but after you know, you, you meet someone special. You might be somebody who uh, it's hard for you to meet new people. Totally get it. But in the long run, you will be thanking me by staying away f- from this wage gap. People power trip very easily, very very easily. It is hard for, pe- for people to respect people who make less money than, than they do. It, it is hard for them to trust somebody who makes less money than you know, than they do. You do not want to be anywhere near a relationship where you, you just your wife earns twenty grand more than you do. So remember, the range is ten thousand dollars, but anything other than that is a no go, absolute no go.